this is Michael at NWA3D, and today we're going to go over the topic of setting up and kind of working through a little bit of Cura 2.7. So in this menu, I have just finished installing Cura, and the first time you boot it, you should be brought to this page that says Add Printer. So the first thing we're going to do in this case is we're actually going to select the custom value. So go ahead and navigate here and click on custom. And then we can change the printer name directly on the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and name mine in NWA 3, 3D A5. So this is going to be the for the smaller 5 by 6 by 4 inch builder. So I'm going to click add printer. And you'll notice that the printer should pop up right inside of here. Here in a second, it'll pull up the machine settings. There we are. So within these machine settings, we're going to have to change a couple of these values, set some of these values to zero, and then we should be good to go. So here at the very start, we're going to change this X width to 125 millimeters. We're going to change the Y depth to 150. We're going to change the Z height to 100, so it should be good. And so this is going to be the five by six by four inch build area. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to leave all of these values as the same. They should be rectangular in Marlin. And then we're going to change the X print head settings to zero. And then change the Y settings to zero as well. So sometimes it can be slow in this case. But I'm just going to go ahead and change them all. Select that one and change it to zero. And this one right up there. And then we have one other value to change here, and we're going to need to change the material diameter size because we're going to be using filament that is 1.75 millimeters in width. So 1.75 there. And then we should be good to go. So notice here at the bottom, we do have start G code and end G code. So this is actually what it tells the printer to do at the very beginning, and you can kind of read through that if you would like to. You can also look up these codes online to find out what they do. So let's go ahead and click finish. And notice that I have my printer here now, so I can click close on this option. And at this point, we're going to select a different couple values over here on the right hand side. And so we're, you're probably looking at it right here like this, but we do want to have the custom setup. That's because we want to kind of go through each of the settings and we want to decide it for ourselves. So go ahead and click on custom, and then you'll see all of the values that we'll be able to change here in a second. So I'm going to change my material type because we're going to be printing with PLA. So I'm going to click down on this and notice that there's a whole bunch of options. I'm going to select right here on PLA. And it should change the material value. So it may change printing temperature or otherwise, but it should be completely fine. So here we have profiles and everything in Cura 2.7 runs on a profile. So what we're about to change, these print setup down here, is actually going to modify the profile and then we'll save a new one. So let's go ahead and click on quality first, and here on layer height, if you hover over this option, you should be able to see a dialog box that gives you the information about it. So here it is basically the utmost determinant of quality or how pretty your print will be. So the A5 printers with the yellow handles handle anywhere from 0.1 to 0.3 in layer height. I like to print it at 0.2 because I find that it's a good medium quality and it usually does the job. And it's a little bit quicker than if I were to print at 0.1. So if you're at a higher or a lower value, then it'll be look better. If you're at a higher value, it'll look coarser or a little bit more rough, but also take less time. So I'm going to leave mine at 0.2 millimeters for now. Next, we're going to go ahead and click on the shell. And we want both of these values to be 0.8, just like they are. That's because our nozzle size that we saw earlier in the machine settings is 0.4 millimeters. So one pass of the nozzle is going to lay down 0.4 material, and then a second pass is going to lay another 0.4, and that'll give us 0.8. So if you want thicker walls, you would increase this value until you have the desired one. But we need to make it a multiple, so you'd have to have 0.8, 1.2, 1.6, and so on. I like to keep the bottom and top thickness the same as the wall thickness, just to make sure that the entire outside walls that we have are all of the same thickness. Next, we're going to have infill. And here on infill percentage, I'm, this is the determinant of durability. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and change this value for now to 5%, and I'll show you what it means to turn up that infill density, and you'll see the change in the model here in a minute. The gradual infill steps, if you went ahead and read that, 
as you go further below the top surfaces, it ends up giving less infill density. So I don't often change the setting. I like having the same amount of infill all the way throughout my model, so it keeps the same amount of structure. Next, we're gonna have material. And on the printing temperature for the material, we wanna make sure this value is at 220 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature that we like to liquefy the PLA at that you have received. So the PLA from push plastic or toner plastic, the two producers we use, has a composite inside of it that makes it a little bit tougher to melt down, and so we like to print it at 220. Next, we're gonna have the diameter, and the diameter of each of these filaments, if you were to read the sticker on the side, is 1.75. We're going to leave the flow percentage at 100%. So the flow percentage is basically a compensation of how much material is extruded. So if I were to increase this to an 110%, it would squirt out or extrude 10% extra plastic. Then we also wanna make sure that this box is checked. So if a printer is moving from a spot that it's not going to print in and it's moving to another one, it'll pull back the filament a little bit as to not leave strands of filament all over your print. So it makes it look cleaner. So we wanna make sure that's on. Next, we're gonna have speed. And on speed, we wanna change the print speed to 50 millimeters per second. That's because at 60 millimeters per second, the printers will work, but it has the possibility that it may knock off your print or it may lower the quality of it. So we like to use 50 millimeters per second as our baseline, and we like to turn it down if we have a harder model to print so that it'll print more effectively. So you can go anywhere down from 25 and up is usually a good range. So I like to print from 25 to 50 millimeters per second. The travel speed can stay at 120. We usually say it's double the print speed. So we wanna change another value in speed, but it's not available right now. So if I hover over this speed option and I click on the cog here, you'll notice that it pulls up a new menu called setting visibility. This setting visibility hides all of these options for you at the very beginning, so it makes life a little bit easier. But for this case, we do wanna enable one option and we wanna kinda of change the initial layer speed. So I'm gonna click here on this checkbox down towards the bottom, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click close. So now that I have that option pop up here on the side, it should allow me to edit this. So the initial layer speed is the very first layer your printer puts down. And we wanna make sure that has a very nice adhesion or it sticks to the build plate really well. So I'm gonna change this value to 15 millimeters per second. The reason for that is the slower it goes, the easier the plastic will have time to adhere to the build area. So we're gonna leave that at 15 and then we should be good on speed. So notice if I hover over any of these, they all do have those small little cogs and you can find more settings beneath what you have right now. So we wanna make sure that print cooling is enabled and that's all we'll need there. And then on support, we're going to want to click on generate support. So support structures help to lift up those overhangs or something that would originally print in midair it would actually help to print a material below it to support it. And so when we click on support, it'll pull up a couple values underneath. And so on support placement, we're gonna go ahead and change that to everywhere for now. So until you're more comfortable with 3D printing and you know what can and cannot have support placement, we recommend that you leave it on everywhere and you have it a support overhang angle of right around 60 degrees. And that should support your areas in that you need it the most. Next, on build plate adhesion, right now it's selected to brim, and that's nice if you need a model to stick better. So the model that we're going to load in has a very flat surface and it has a good surface area, so we don't necessarily need a brim to keep it on there. So I'm going to go ahead and click skirt, and it's going to make it easy and just make an outline of our object. If you do use brim, what it will actually create is a whole bunch of layers out next to the object and it helps to keep it next to the build plate or keep it on or from falling over. So that's all the values that we'll need to change. And at this point, we can go ahead and save this profile. So we wanna make sure we save it, otherwise we'll have to come back and change these later. So notice that our profile here in the top where it says fine and now it has a little star. So go ahead and click on that star and it's gonna open our profile manager. So here it says all of the settings that we have changed or otherwise, and we wanna go ahead and click create. So I'm gonna create a profile and I'm just gonna name it the A5 printer. 
That way I know which printer it's for and I can select those settings as a base setting for it. So once I have that, I'm gonna click OK and it'll create a new one right here and then I should be good to go. So now I can close back out of this and there is more settings here. So if you do wanna look through those, you are welcome to. So they do have materials, they have more printers, they have different setting visibility and then you also have your general settings for the Cura app itself. So once you feel happy with that kind of stuff, Go ahead and click close. And now all we need to do is load a model inside of here. So let's kind of go over that process real quick. So if we click here on the top left hand corner and click on open file, we should be able to navigate to our SD card that we use for our printers. So if I go to my SD card and I go to my STL files, I'm going to go ahead and load in the six sided dice. So now the six sided dice is inside of my build area and notice that it's yellow and it seems happy. Now, if I were to move this to an area and say I left it there, notice it becomes striped and a little bit odd. That's meaning that it doesn't like that and it needs somewhere else to print. So if I right click on the object, it pulls up a couple different things that I can do with it. And I like using these top three values for what I need. So I like to center selected model and I use that quite often. So now it's back to the center to where it was. And you'll notice that there's three axes on it. And all I did was left click it. So that pulls up the move function. And so by grabbing any one of these arrows, I can move it in that direction, or I can change the value here. The next option is scale. Scaling is going to increase the size or decrease the size depending upon how much you want. So if I type 50% here, it'll cut the cube in half. So I typed in 50 and clicked enter, and now it is half the size. I can also click this button right here and it will reset my size. You can have uniform scaling, which means that all the sides will change equally, or you can have non-uniform and stretch it in different ways. Next, we're gonna have rotate. And so when I click on the rotate option, it pulls up three different axes for me to rotate the object around. So if I wanted to take this and I wanted the two to be on the bottom side, I could grab the red axis and tilt it all the way around 90 degrees, and now it is on the bottom. So that's how you're going to move your object around and let's think a little bit of how object orientation will change. So if I were to print it in this direction, it might be a little bit more difficult for the printer to do it. So in this direction, it is a little bit odder for it, and it's gonna have these overhang angles, and so that probably isn't gonna work the best. So think about print orientation when you're working with Cura. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that position it's at now, and then we're gonna go ahead and talk about the mirror. Mirror is going to flip 180 degrees depending upon which value you select. So notice I put the two down earlier and now the two is on top because I clicked this blue arrow. Okay, so I can center selected model just to make sure it's all in the center and now I'm pretty happy with how it looks. So one thing I'm going to do is I want to check and make sure that it's printing off the first layer. So in order to do that, if I click here on this little eyeball, you'll notice it's called view mode. Now if I go to view mode and then select the option of layers, it turned gray because I don't have automatic slicing on. So I don't like automatic slicing on because every time I would make a change in these settings, it would change how my object and it would re-slice it. So if you do want to change that, you can always go to preferences, configure Cura, and here is slice automatically. So I'm gonna leave that value off because I don't want it to change. Click close, and then I'm going to prepare my model. So you'll notice it generates the model, it says slicing here, and it's creating it and cutting it into a whole bunch of different layers that the 3D printer is going to understand. So notice that there's this weird blue material here on the outside. And so what that material is, is our support material. So here in the bottom left, it kind of gives you a color grid. And so the blue is helpers. The red is going to be your outside wall or shell. The orange kind of color is going to be infill. The yellow color like this right here is going to be top and bottom layers. The green is the inner wall. And then also, if you click on this one, you'll notice that there is travelers or basically how your printer will move. So I think that makes the model look a little rough. So I don't like having that. So I don't think I need these supports here on the outside. So if I want to get rid of the supports, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into support and then I'm going to click off of generate support. And then I'm going to prepare my model once more. And you'll notice that it won't have it this next time and it'll look a lot cleaner and it should print better. 
So some models don't always need support, especially with something like this. So the overhang or angles that these produce where these numbers are shouldn't be too great to where the printer can't handle it. So I'm going to scroll all the way down through my layers, and you'll notice that we can see the inside of our object now. And so I, I'm kind of manipulating the screen a whole bunch, and I'm doing that by just right-clicking, which rotates. And then if I click in on the mouse wheel, it should let me pan side to side. Then you can also scroll in and out with the wheel. So next, you see on the inside here that we have our yellow bottom layer, and then this kind of orangey cross structure right here is going to be our infill. So I'm going to change that value to 20% to show you what happens when you have a greater infill or change the durability. So if I change this to 20, and then of course re-slice my model, you should be able to see that there's more infill or area for it to work with. And so that's going to support the walls more and also the top and bottom. So notice that there's more of a grid structure inside of it, and it helps us kind of see how strong this object could be. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. And now we can go ahead and scroll all the way down to the very first layer and check out what it's going to bring. So notice my two is still on the bottom right now. And then I can actually see all of the layers that it should print down and how it's going to work. So I like to confirm that this layer is down just to make sure that Cura is going to actually lay it completely on the build plate. And if you don't see a very good area when you cut when you're slicing a model, then you may want to reorient it to make it so. So I am happy with this kind of model and it seems pretty good. So here in the bottom, we can actually change the name of how we want it to be by clicking on this small little pencil and we can change the value. So I'm going to just name it simply dice. So here in the bottom right, you should be also able to see this clock. And so this clock is telling you how much time it believes it will take in order to make the object. And if you hover over it, it'll show you what timing it's using for each of the areas. Right here on top is the actual sizing of the material or the object. And then here, this 0.78 meters is how much of length we will use. And then the about two grams is the weight we will use. So that's just all you need to know about Cura. And as you play with it more often, you'll get better and better. So now we can go ahead and click Save to Removable Drive, or I like to click Save to File because I'm a bit picky of where it goes. So if I click here and click Save to File, I can name this dice and save it into my SD card so we can place this into our printer. So once I click Save, I should have it as a G code, and then I can export. And once I'm done exporting, then I can eject my SD card and put it into the printer. So that was just about all you should know about Cura, and if you need any more help with it, you're welcome to contact support, and we would love to help you out, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and good luck 3D printing.